Hey guys, it's Tina, and today I'm doing the book addiction tag. I was tagged by Robin at Robin Reads. I will leave her links below, so make sure you go and check her out. And let's get into it. So the first question is, what is the longest amount of time you can comfortably go without picking up a book? Couple days, depends. I usually am always like reaching for a book because it's like, it's, it's my hobby. It's what I do in my pastime. It's what I do to relax. So if I'm not picking up a book, it's because I'm super busy doing other things and I just don't have the time to pick up a book. I usually read right before bed or lately I've been listening to audiobooks while I'm getting some work done. So it's just something that I'm just constantly doing. Even on vacation, I always bring a book or something with me. There's always downtime that we're just relaxing or not actively like exploring somewhere or stuff like that. So that's what I do is if we're like at a pool, read a book or if we're just kind of chilling watching TV, I'll read while everybody else is doing that stuff. How many books do you carry on your person at any one time? Well, I have the Kindle app on my phone, so all of the books on my Kindle are always with me because I typically always have my phone. If I'm going somewhere and I know that there is a like a a time or there will be a time for me to read, then I will bring a physical book with me to read. But I'm not the kind of person that carries two or three books with me at all times. Usually it's just my phone and then if I find a chance to read then I will read or I've been actually listening to audiobooks a lot more so I will plug in my my earbuds and listening to an audiobook while I'm waiting or doing something like that. So the next question is do you keep every book you buy and receive or happily pass it on to make space for more? I happily pass them on. I only keep the books, physical books, because I don't think you can like pass on like electronic books or ebooks. I only keep the physical book if I think I'm going to read it again. I buy a ton of used books for super cheap, so I actually buy quite a bit of of books. I'll read it once and then I'll turn it right back into my used bookstore. I'm basically using that kind of like a library recently and just getting credit and just it's like a revolving door. And the reason why I use the used bookstore more like a library and it, that's a way more expensive way to do it is because I have kids, dogs, you name it. I'm a huge klutz. So I actually damage more books than I would like to admit. I don't often like borrowing books from the library unless it's like an ebook or something because I don't want the risk of ruining it and then having to pay for it anyways. That's why that is. How long would you spend at a bookshop on a standard visit? A couple hours. I usually have a time constraint because I have kids and either they're gonna get out of school or I have to take them somewhere or my husband's with me or my daughter's with me and their attention span is minimal. So I would love to spend all day looking at every book in the bookstores that I go to but I just don't have that amount of time. So yeah usually a couple hours. If I have a couple hours and I'm out and about and I need to be somewhere and I don't want to go home. I'll pop it in the used bookstore and just spend a couple hours browsing and then yeah, so a couple hours. Where does the task picking up a book appear on your to-do list? It's not like on my to-do list because I usually just automatically pick up a book. I always find time to pick up a book. I usually have to make time to do other things or have a to-do list for other things. Picking up a book is just always there. But I mean, if I would say I set time aside, I usually pick up a book right before bed, always. But it's not like a to-do thing. It's just like watching TV before you go to bed. You don't to do TV. I don't know. Weird question. Well, maybe it's not a weird question, but I think bookworms just reach for books like other people watch TV, right? Like, do you do you watch more TV than you read books or do you read books more than you watch TV? Because I read books more than I watch TV. Yeah? What do you think? How many books do you reckon you own in total, including eBooks? I would say I probably have about 200 eBooks. I would say I probably have about 200 physical books. It's 400, about. 
give or take a smidge. Either way, I don't know. If you want to include like my daughter's books, you could probably add another hundred there. I don't, maybe she's up to 50. I don't think she's up to like a hundred. Probably 50. Maybe, yeah, no, about 50. Solid 50 maybe. Huh, I don't know. I'm not going to count them. So maybe about 400, about. Approximately how often do you bring books up in conversation? Mm, depends on the person. I don't have a ton of people who read a lot like I do. So if it's somebody that reads a lot, then we will may talk about books the entire conversation. But if it's somebody who doesn't read it at all, I don't bring it up at all because I want to continue to talk to that person usually, so I don't want them to get bored in the conversation. What is the biggest book page count you have finished reading? That would be Oathbringer. Oathbringer is... What is it? Oathbringer is 1,233 pages, and I finished this Bad Mama Jamma, uh, I think beginning this year. That is, for those who don't know, that is the third... I believe the third book. Pretty sure third book, yeah. Third book in the Stormlight Ar Archive written by Brandon Sanderson. The first book is The Way of Kings, which is right there. The second book is Words of Radiance, which is right there. And the third book is Oathbringer, which is now on the table. If you like high fantasy that has over a thousand pages each book, that is a series to read if you haven't already. Is there a book that you had to get your hands on against all odds, including, it says, search bookstores, online digging, stocked authors, etc.? No, I'm not the kind of person that has to get to something against all odds. I do search and research stuff. There is books that I really do want to get, but I don't obsessively look for it. The only only books that would come close to being a yes to this answer is uh, VC Andrew books. A long time ago when I was a teenager, I read a lot of VC Andrew books and all of them were my friend's books and I borrowed them from her. So I never actually received these books for myself or own them. I do want to get the collection of these books and read them again, but I don't like every time I go into a used bookstore, I look for certain books, they have to be a certain kind. So when these books came out or the books that I read came out, they had like the keyhole cover. And so if I go to a used bookstore and I see a VC Andrew books with a keyhole cover, like I buy it. And then I do search on eBay for these books with the keyhole. And then I've bought in like one book on eBay. So like every couple of weeks or so, or when I'm bored, I will go on eBay and like look. And when I'm in a used bookstore, I'll look to see if they having these books, but I don't, it's not an obsessive thing. It's like a passive, I want to get this collection of these books that I've read before. So that's the only thing that I could really say yes to. And honestly, I've only gotten like four books in the last couple of years that I've been casu very casually searching. So it's not, it's not anything. It's not anything. Is there a book you struggle to finish because you refuse to DNF? I'm just going to put this, not even right. <laughs> I'm just gonna put this right here, this book. And it's not because it's bad. It's not because of anything about this book. It's not the book, it's me. And I think it has a lot to do with, I read The Way of Kings and then I jumped right into Words of Radiance. Then I jumped right into Oathbringer. And that was like 3000 pages in like three months or less than three months, or I don't even know, a very short period of time. And so by the time I got to this book, I started it right after and I got to, see I'm on page, I'm on page 488. So I got a good chunk into it and I just, I just stopped like reaching for it. And I started only like reading a page or two and then finding something else to do or listen to the audiobook for 10 minutes and then finding something else to do. I really haven't picked it up in a month. So what I really need to do is start it over and I know I need to start it over. And that is literally what's preventing me from finishing the book is because at this point I have forgotten everything that has happened at the beginning of the book. And so if I start right now, I'm not going to catch up and I'm going to miss stuff. And then I'm not going to give it it, it's adequate attention and I think I won't do it the best service if I just pick it up right here and there. And so then to restart and redo those 500 pages just sounds like a chore and that's not what I want to do. So I'm waiting for the I want to be back in this world 
type feeling, which I'm sure will happen because I really enjoyed all of the other Sword My Archive books. I'm waiting for that feeling to want to dive back into the high fantasy. But lately I've been reading a lot of YA, shorter books, less intense fantasy books. So I'm pretty sure I'll swing back that way, but it's just not now. What are your main book goals for this year? I think one of my goals at the beginning of this year was to read more independent published authors. I kind of been doing that. Like I've been read, I've been reading one indie book for like months and literally it's so stupid. I pick it up every night before bed and I like read three pages. It's interesting. It's not that it's boring, but I read like three pages and I'm, then I just want to go to sleep. So I only get like three pages at the time. So it's, I don't know why I chose three, but that's just the number I chose. It could be five. It could be 10. I get a couple of pages or I, can't, I get a couple of, uh... you know, a couple of pages in and then I just want to go to sleep. So I put it down and that's what's been going on. So I would like, I, I wanted to read more indie authors, but it doesn't seem like it's going that way. I also wanted to read or finish more or my series and that's not going the way it is either. And it's more because I'm a mood reader and this year has been really, the beginning of this year has been super wonky. Nothing is normal. Nothing is going how it did any previous years. So I've kind of been giving myself a lot of space to not have such a strict schedule or try to put pressure on myself to do things because there's tons of pressure on me to get other things done. And this is, I don't want to make booktube or reading a chore because once it's a chore, I'll, I'll just quit. So I don't want to do that. Kind of suck. Have you ever had the privilege of converting somebody into a reader by inspiration or incessant nagging? Uh, you could go with incessant nagging and my daughter. Does that count? She's a reader. My son is not like, my son's not a reader. I've, we've been trying to read the Percy Jackson series. I don't know when we're still on book one and it's kind of hard to get him to want to do this. I thought him being a part of this channel and doing like reviews with me would get him to want to read. And at first that worked with the Animal Farm video. He was super excited and we got that done. But then we switched into Percy Jackson and like I have to sit him down in order for us to like read the book, which is not fun for him. So, but my daughter, she wants new books and she reads every night. And I don't know how I did that because she's dyslexic. So it's harder for her to read than it is my son. I'm dyslexic too. So I don't know how that came about. I just got her the right book at the right time and she just fell in love with reading. I'm not sure how I did that, but. You can say nagging because, well, I don't know. I haven't nagged my daughter to read. I made it very important important for her and made every tool available for her to be able to learn how to read and she does private tutoring and I nag her to do do her tutoring but that's not like reading for pleasure. I don't know. If you want to count my daughter then I would count my daughter. Otherwise otherwise it's nobody. Describe what books mean to you in five words. I have my healthy slash unhealthy hobby. So why I say healthy and unhealthy is healthy is because reading is healthy. I think reading is healthy. It's healthy for your mind. Unhealthy is because there are certain books that I get obsessive, which the entire world like falls away, that, that the entire world doesn't exist. And I will focus nothing but except for like, I will hyper focus on reading that book and that's it until it ends. And then there's like this kind of weird depression at the end because the book ends, but I did nothing but read that book. So that's why I say unhealthy. I'm sure you needed that explanation, but that's how it is. That is the end of the addiction book tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. So next I'm gonna do is tag a couple of people. I'm gonna tag Monique from Monique Reads, Kayla, and Kristen from Red Read Wine. I will link them below. I have not checked to see if you guys have done this tag. So if you've already done this tag, super sorry about tagging you again. If you haven't done this tag and want to do this tag, consider yourself tagged. Just leave your video in the comments below so I can stop by and check out your answers because these kind of things super interest me. I like to see how other people read and stuff like that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have something to say, comment below. If you've reached the end of this video and you just want to say hi, but you really don't have much to say, 
give me a peace sign. I do that. I actually go to videos and like I've watched the entire video and I'm like, I really don't have something to say, but like I'm here and I give them a thumbs up and like I kind of want them to know that I was here to know I want them to know that like I'm totally like supporting their channel. But I have nothing to say. And sometimes I like, I, I feel like I want to leave an emoji and be like, hey, hi, I'm here just saying hi. But then I'm like, well, what if they don't like that? I don't know. Insecurities pop in and then I just end up leaving a thumbs up and don't actually comment. So if you're here and you want to let me know that you're here, peace me in the comment section below or just say hi. And if you want to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see all of my videos, make sure you hit the bell so that you get notifications. So that's it. That's all I got. I will see you in the next one. Bye.